In today's video, we're gonna have a go at making a bandle tail cake. So I was really pleased when Riot Games got in touch to ask if I could make a short video of one of their new upcoming games, which is Bandle Tale, A League of Legends Story. So I was really excited about this one because I love the style of their characters on it. Really cute. And I'm gonna show you now how I went about making the cake for it. So I started with a 10 inch sponge cake. Again, I didn't bake it. I'm getting so lazy guys that I'm just buying these cakes ready made. Um, I'll put links below to where I got it from as well. They're quite nice cakes. But I'm just going to use some blue buttercream in between this 10 inch cake. I'm going to trim a little bit off the bottom so that when I stand it up later, it is nice and flat. And then I want to get a layer of chocolate ganache on the front and the back. Now you can use buttercream. It's just ganache that's so a little bit firmer. Now I love the taste of ganache, so that works well for me. Um, but when we stand the cake up, it will just, it'll stand better. So while that's firming up, I'm gonna get a move on with the character. So I'm making this out of modeling paste. He's got quite a large head. So my main concern for this one is the weight of the head on his small body. But I'll start by creating the facial features. Now, if you want to reduce the weight in the head, you can add uh, like a Rice Krispie treat inside, like a ball of those, or you could even use a polystyrene ball inside the head as long as you're not gonna eat it. So I want to get on his little eyebrows, a bit of shading. I'm just using some edible powders in the eyes, mixing it with a little bit of water on here. Now I tend to mix my powdered colors with like clear alcohol, but for some reason the white I find works quite well mixed with water instead of the clear alcohol. And let's get a bit more shading. Again, these are still edible dusts. They just come in what looks like a makeup palette, but I promise it's not makeup. I think the shading just kind of gives it a bit more depth and it doesn't make it more realistic because it's obviously not a realistic character, but I don't know. I, I think it just looks a bit nicer with that on. So let's roll a tiny nose, tiny bit pink for the nose. Again, just sticking with model and paste for all this character because it's going to set nice and firm. You can use fondant. But for me, it's a little bit too soft and you can add Tylos or gum trag. Okay, so let's work on the ears. I'm going to use a heart shape cutter. I thought that might save me a bit of time for creating the shapes. And then I'm just going to fold it in half. And I've used two layers of modeling paste, a pink layer and a blue layer for these ears. Again, let's just get a bit of shading on there so it matches. And then we've got a teardrop of white modeling paste for the start of the hair. Put some little lines into it and then we're going to press that onto the head. And then I can push more lines in with my dress and tool once that's in place. And then let's roll some smaller pieces and add those on there too. And I'm just going to continue going with the hair. Now I actually didn't add hair to the back of the head on this one. I know I, I should have, but because of where I was putting him against the front of the cake, the idea was that you didn't see the back of him. So I didn't put hair on the back. Kind of wish I had done that though. So I'm going to give him a little earring. I've cut a strip of black, nice and thin. And we're going to stick that to the back of the ear and then the front. I'll paint that up gold later. Again, more dusting. Let me know guys in the comments below, do you prefer it with the dusting and shading on there or did you like it before I added the shading? It takes me a little bit longer to put it on there, but for me, I think I prefer it, but I'd be interested in knowing what you guys think. And the earring is just painted with some edible gold. I've got like the water activated paints there. I'll put links below in the video to it all. Then let's make him a base to stand on. So I haven't played this game yet, but I am looking forward to playing it very soon. And I think there's a lot of crafting involved. So I think this looks like a ball of maybe yarn or wool that he's standing on. And to create that, I'm just gonna create little twists in my modeling paste and I'm gonna push them together. So it kind of looks like a plait. And then I'm just gonna stick this over the ball of paste. So I've just wet the paste. I've used water, but you can use edible glue. And I've done that three times in different sizes. So let's start by adding his little feet and then we'll move on to the trousers. So just some tiny pieces that are gonna go on his ankles. There we go, the trousers I'm actually gonna do in a different color. So it kind of looks weird at this stage, but I'm going for the shapes that are on the image that I have of him. And then I think he has like a cannon. So we'll roll that as a solid piece. Now I could do it hollow. It's just, it will take a little bit longer to set. So I, I don't have ages to work on this one. So I'm just gonna keep it solid. These bits that I'm rolling out now, I'll paint them gold later. But for now I'm doing them in like a kind of mustardy or like brown color. I want a color that's not too dissimilar to gold so that when I paint it, if I miss any bits, you'll see this color underneath and it, it won't look too different. So I'm just adding the extra details now to his cannon. I think it's a cannon. 
I'll just trim a bit off the bottom so I can push it against the base there. And then let's add a little ball for the belly and body. And pop a bit of brown around there for the belt. And then I can add details like the buckles and things like that. A little piece for the collar. And then let's get some fingers on there. And I think he wears little gloves, this character, so pop those on as well. It's just tiny, tiny pieces of blue for the arms. And each arm looks a little bit different on this one, so I'm just going to build it up a little bit at a time. And then the top part of his arm will go on there like so. And then wrap it thinner pieces now around for all the decoration. I realise it's difficult because I should have really shown you guys a picture in the corner of what he looks like so you could see what I was aiming for as I went along. Let's just add some pieces of yarn on there. Is it yarn or is it wool? I refer to it as wool, but I realise I'm saying yarn in this video. Is yarn a more American saying? Okay, let's push his head on. You can see he's wanting to lean a little bit because of the weight. So if needs be, I will prop him up against things. I'm actually just going to add a little bit of white hair just back there. So let's make the goggles on top of his head. Now, I wish I'd gone about a different way of doing this, but I was trying to think of what would be the quickest way to do it. And had I had a bit more time, I think I would have spent longer just neatening them off. But yeah, I'm going to paint the brown bits gold later. Add some little details to my leaves down here. These will look nice when they've got a bit of additional dusting on for a bit more color as well. So you guys watching, do you play many computer games? Now, I have never really been into computer games until sort of more recently Richard bought a Switch for us. I play some games on it, but I'm not very good. But I like the really easy to play things because I'm just bad at gaming. So I'm going to add some color as well to these balls of wool. I think the fruits, I'm going to say the fruits, these little ball shaped things. So next, let's use some isomalt. Now the isomalt I've just heated in the microwave. I should probably be wearing gloves. This gets very hot. I've added a bit of blue food coloring or kind of turquoise food coloring. And I had some little geode molds in that I bought for another project ages ago. So these came in really handy. The ice mold sets pretty quick, which is good. And I'm going to push it into like a little rock shape. Just press this around to make it more rock shaped. And let's make it a bit more pattern so it matches what's in the game. There we go. They've got a few air bubbles in, so I could have blow torched them out which is what you do to get rid of some of the smaller air bubbles on isomalt, but I'm not very good with isomalt yet, so I need a bit more practice with it. So I might have got air bubbles in, but I don't think it looks too bad. Then I'm going to move on to decorating the cake. So you'll see, I don't think I showed you everything earlier, but I ganached around the edges um, and the front and the back of this cake so that we can stand it up later. But I can work on it on its side or this way. For now, I'm just painting it on a little scene. Now, I like the idea of painting onto ganache because I know a lot of you guys are not keen on fondant. Um, I put it on most of my cakes because buttercream is not something that I'm overly good with. I know I need a bit more practice. So for this, uh, ganache, and then I painted on it with edible powders, and then I just mixed them with clear alcohol so that they became more like a paint. Now, I did try going with a bit more detail. There's like a little building in the little uh, promotional material for this game. But I think I made mine look a bit more like a beehive than probably what it's supposed to look like. <laughs> so I'm not sure I should have added that bit. I think it maybe looked nicer before adding that. But yeah, it's just a really simple. I, I didn't go into too much detail with this because I planned on adding the thing that I wasn't going to add, fondant. I did, I did add some little details on it, but I didn't want to cover the whole cake in the fondant. So yeah, we didn't do that on this one. So I rolled it fairly thin and created a bridge. So just a nice flat one. Um, just did with some colors, cut it out to shape, and then stuck that onto the front of the cake. So I think I need a bit more practice at like painting scenery and things. Um, something that, do you know what I'd love to do? Every year I say, oh, I'm going to spend more time trying to learn to draw and paint. And it, it never really happens. I don't ever really get around to it. I need to find some time, push myself into doing it. So for this, we're just keeping it nice and basic, nothing too fancy. I'm going to cover these front bits. I've just painted a bit of water in there as well between the bridge and then some little pieces of fondant. Now these pieces are going to be easy to pull off if you don't like fondant and you don't want to eat them. My sister's usually the one that eats all the fondant because she loves the stuff. So I'm going to use a couple of different colours or different shades of green uh, for creating like trees. And we're just going to put them on kind of in the foreground around the edges. Maybe a couple of branches. I'll just use the pale brown that I've got left over. And I can always add more colour to that by painting it up afterwards for a bit more detail. 
Then I'm going to roll some individual leaves and stick those on. Also some more balls of what, what I think might be wool. Like I say, I, I want to get this game so I can play it and find out what all these different things are that I'm putting on the cake. So at the moment, I'm just going off like the images I have of the game. So with the balls of wool, again, I'm going to paint them up on them to look like the light is hitting in one area. So it's lighter in some bits, darker in the others. And I'm going to stick it on. If it overlaps over the edge, I'll just trim that bit off. And again, we can overlap more leaves over the top of that. It just gives it a bit more dimension by putting those layers on. I feel like now after I told you I wasn't going to use much fondant, I've ended up putting quite a bit of fondant on this. Let me know in the comments below, guys, if you like to see painting on cakes or if you'd like to see me do more painting on cakes, um, maybe a bit more detailed than this, or if you don't like painting on cakes. And if you do like it, should I keep painting on ganache rather than fondant? So the darker green, I think, really adds to the leaves on this, though. I think it looks much better when that's painted on. And then, of course, I'm going to paint some different shades of brown on the little wooden branch bits as well. I actually thought the leaves were only going to take me about five minutes to stick on and paint, but they, they probably took me about an hour altogether to stick those on and paint them. Now, at the moment, the back of my cake is very plain, and I want you to be able to spin it around and see the front and the back. So I don't have enough time to do a full scene like I did on the front, but I think what I'm going to do is create the logo. So I've got two layers of modeling paste here. So again, modeling paste, you can use fondant for this bit. I've pressed them together, but I haven't stuck them together because what I'm going to do is trace around this logo and then I'm going to remove the letters and pull the brown out so that it hopefully just leaves the white. Um, at first, I did it the wrong way around and pulled out the bits of the B that I actually needed to leave in uh, without thinking. I quickly learned my lesson for the rest of the letters. And then I wanted to add some shading just around the edges because it kind of looks like there's a bit of a shadow on the actual logo. So I'm just trying to capture that with, I'm just using edible black pen for that on this one. I did some leaves, getting a little bit of painting work. Okay, so it's difficult cutting around corners with my craft knife, so it's a little bit untidy on some of those areas. But let's lift the cake up and we're gonna stick this on the back. But first, I am gonna paint the back. So like I say, I don't have enough time for like, scenery oh, and I wish I'd smoothed that back bit off a bit so what I should have done now guys is got out the white chocolate ganache and really put a bit in to kind of fill in you see those bits that are missing uh, bits of ganache where it dips in so that it was nice and smooth that would have made it nicer for me to paint on but I didn't I was just rushing and I, I say I rushed it they still did this over like two days um so it wasn't a super quick cake to do so I'm just painting a portal on the back. Again, this was on a lot of the promotional material. I thought it was quite nice and different colors to what was on the front. Um, I don't think I got the colors quite right. I wanted it a bit more vibrant, but with the edible colors, I find that it's difficult to get pinks and purples that are sometimes as vibrant as what I might like. So if you guys know of any pinks and purples that are really bright, vibrant ones that are edible, let me know in the comments below. Um, and I, I'll see if I can get hold of some of those to have a go with them. So once it's painted on the back, I can then stick my logo on. Now, I made it fairly thin because if not, it can end up a bit heavy, but that's stuck on there nicely. And then I'll just add some additional leaves on there that kind of look like they're blowing around the portal, or at least that's the idea that they look like they're blowing around the portal. Again, they look very plain until I start painting onto those. Now, before I put it on the board, I think what I'm gonna do is have some grass and I'm just gonna dye some coconut green. Now, I do have a, another video on this, if you want to see it in a bit more detail. But yeah, I just put some coconut in with a little bit of water and some food coloring, and I shook it together in a jam jar. Oh, it's a bit bright, but you can change the colors. You can do different variations of different shades and mix it all together, which looks quite nice for grass. While the coconut's drying, let's work out where we're putting all the things. So the cake and then the little extra bits that we've made. And I think it needs some water coming out from under the bridge. So I've got some piping gel mixed with some blue food coloring. I'll move the little character out of the way so that I can just place my coconut on the board. Now, I didn't stick it down because it wasn't traveling anywhere. It wasn't moving anywhere. But if I was going to take this to somebody's house for them to eat, then I would have put a bit of piping gel on my board everywhere that I wanted the grass to stick just so that it doesn't fall off everywhere. Let's cut into this. <laughs> let me know in the comments below guys if you prefer the front side of this cake or the back side and let me know if you've had a go at playing this game as well and how you found it did you enjoy it too see you next time